Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Power8 wireless GameCube style controller. Now this is a controller I was actually looking forward to reviewing for two major reasons. Number one, the wired edition of this controller didn't really impress me that much. It wasn't bad, but they did make a few mistakes that I hoped wasn't going to be repeated in the wireless version. And number two, with the review of this controller, I will pretty much have reviewed all the available GameCube style controllers from officially branded third-party manufacturers. And although today we're going to be reviewing this controller as an everyday controller, meaning not only for Smash Brothers, but really if you decide to use this as a controller for every type of game out there. But after today, I'll also be able to start working on a roundup of the best Smash Brothers controller. But now let's get back to today and let's start with a close up of this controller so that we can see just what it's working with. So first, as usual, I always like to take a quick look at the box. And first and foremost, you can see that this is an officially branded controller because they have Pokemon at the forefront since this is the Pikachu edition of the controller. You can also see clearly see that it's manufactured by Powerade, that it's wireless and it also offers motion controls. If we switch to the side of the box, we have blown up views of the controller on both sides, giving you different aspects. And lastly, if we turn to the back, we have a breakdown of basically all the button layout that the controller has and its major functions here, indicating that it is Bluetooth wireless, that it includes once again motion control, it has a larger D-pad and it has both shoulder buttons added contrary to the original uh, GameCube controller. It also indicates that it's compatible with all Nintendo Switch games, but it does clearly indicate that it does not support uh, infrared, HD rumble, or NFC. Lastly, it indicates that there's a flashing LED light for a low battery warning. And the first big surprise about this controller is that it includes two AA batteries. Because this is not a rechargeable controller, it does take two AA batteries to function. Now, once we get inside the box, this is pretty much what you have. You have a basic instruction manual. They do at least provide a couple of AA batteries. However, I'm using rechargeable ones for uh, my controller. And obviously the last thing is you have the controller itself. Now let's put these two aside and let's go look at what we're really interested in. So now if we start with the front of the controller, at the front here, we have the notch joystick here that is really for Smash Brothers. We also have the C stick, once again, that is a copy of the GameCube style controller. Uh, the D-pad, however, is larger than on the original uh, GameCube controller, making it a lot more functional for uh, platformers or fighters. Although it's not the best, it is much better than the original GameCube controller. After that, we have the basic GameCube style layout here for the buttons. And lastly, we have all the buttons needed to be a, a controller for the Switch. So you have your home plus minus and capture button right here. So, so far the front of the controller is very, very similar to the wired version that we already looked at. However, already when I grab it in my hand, it feels sturdier. So I don't think they're using the exact same plastic as on the wired version. This seems like a sturdier, a better quality plastic overall. Now, if we flip it to the top, we have the first major difference with the wired version. First, obviously we have the syncing button because this syncs like a pro controller. You hold this down for three seconds. It puts it in syncing mode and you're able to sync it up. However, if you checked out my review for the wired version of the Power A GameCube controller, what I really didn't like about it is the ZL and ZR buttons at the back were sort of copies of the original GameCube style controller, but copies to the point that they'd put a extremely long travel distance on them so that they would simulate uh, analog triggers. However, for anyone that knows, you know, the technical aspects of the switch, the switch does not recognize analog triggers. It basically always recognizes all triggers as digital. What that meant is that you had an extremely long travel time on the back for absolutely no reason. And it made re it really difficult for multiple presses. Well, the good news is that on the wireless version, they did not do that. They put regular digital buttons at the back with short 
rapid travel time, meaning that multiple rapid presses is not a problem on the wireless controller at all. So just that one little change on its own is gonna make this controller much more functional for everyday gaming than its wired counterpart. Now, if we finish up with the back of the controller, I'm just gonna get this battery cover open. So as I mentioned earlier, this controller runs on two AA batteries. I'm using rechargeable batteries. These are standard 1100 milliamp batteries. I get about 10 to 12 hours of play out of them, which in my opinion is more than decent. Now I know a lot of people are gonna see this as a downside and I will be docking at a point uh, when we get to the scoring on this controller because it does not have a rechargeable battery. But I probably don't see this personally as big as of a negative as a lot of you will out there, simply because when you're on the go, I find it's easier to carry around multiple rechargeable battery packs and swap them out rapidly than actually having to plug your controller in, wait till it charges to get back to wireless gaming. But that's always gonna be a personal call and it always is gonna depend on the way you use your controller. And just to rapidly break down the features of this controller once again, so it's fully compatible with all Switch games because it has all the required buttons to be able to play any game. However, to repeat, it does not have rumble, it does not support NFC, and it does not have an IR reader. However, it does support motion control. So that is not gonna be an issue with this controller and it works pretty well. Now, if I brought my Switch Lite into frame here, it isn't to show you that the yellows don't exactly match up, although they are pretty close. It's actually to show you, once again, a surprising feature about this controller that I wasn't expecting, and that is that it can wake your Switch up. So this is another wireless controller that has the interesting possibility to be able to wake your Switch up without having to physically get up and push the power button which is an interesting advantage. So now that we have a better idea of what this controller is offering, scoring is gonna be a much easier process. Just before we get started, I wanna make this really clear to everyone that this is not a sponsored video. The controller was not even provided to me by Powery. I bought it myself on the channel. And if ever you do decide to pick up the controller for yourself and you wanna help the channel out at the same time, I'll be leaving Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. I also wanna remind you that if you're liking the video at all, please drop a like. And if you wanna see more, please subscribe to the channel. The visibility helps us a lot on YouTube and the more views I get, the easier it's gonna be for me to come out with more and more reviews for all of you. So now that that's all out of the way, let's get to the review. And if this is the first review of mine that you're watching, I say it in all my videos, but I have a specific video on my channel that explains exactly what my review process is and how I score controllers. You'll be getting most of the information in today's video, but if ever you're someone that really likes the details, that video is out there and you can go watch it and you'll be getting even a better idea of exactly how I went through the scoring. So now the first category that I always look at in my controllers is the general feel and the build quality of the controller. And for the PowerA wireless GameCube controller, I've got to say I'm going to be giving it a very strong 4 out of 5. Now overall, the reason it's getting a 4 out of 5, as I said earlier in the description, this controller really does feel sturdy, it feels solid. It also has a very ergonomic design and it feels good in your hands. Also, the batteries do contribute to adding a little more weight to this controller and that's something I like. I like to know I'm holding the controller when I'm playing games. And at the same time, it's not overly heavy where it tires your hands out. However, the reason why it's not getting a five out of five, well, primarily it's because it's a little bit on the smaller side. And to my hands, I prefer a larger controller. However, if you have smaller hands or you're buying this for a child, it could easily be a positive rather than a slight downside. And secondly, although the build quality is top notch, it is not on par with the best controllers I've reviewed so far. It's just a tiny, tiny bit underneath. Now the second category we're going to be reviewing is the aesthetics and the features offered by this controller. And in this category, the controller is going to be scoring a solid 
but not stellar, 6 out of 10. Now, although I might be repeating myself a little bit, the reason it's getting a 6 out of 10 is because it has motion control, it's wireless, it has a larger D-pad, it can wake your switch up, and because of the aesthetics, I've got to say that Powerray makes some of the most visually attractive controllers. I find this Pikachu Edition controller is actually one of the really, really nice controllers they make in this line. So it's getting a couple of bonus points for aesthetics. And once again, although I'm repeating myself, it is not getting the points because it does not have a rechargeable battery, it does not have NFC, it does not have IR capability, and it doesn't have rumble. So that's why it's not scoring any higher, however. Now we get to the most important and anticipated part of every review. We're going to be looking at the gaming reviews. So, as usual, we're going to be starting with FPS and action games. Now, in this category, this controller is going to be getting a decent 7.5 out of 10. Now, if you're asking yourself why a 7.5 out of 10, well, in this category, since you do not have a second joystick but a C-stick, it will handicap you a little bit, especially in those FPS games where you often have to aim with the second stick. The notch joysticks just let, make it a little bit more difficult to be precise, and it's the same problem with action games where you need often need to control the camera. However, overall, it is scoring pretty solidly because it offers all the buttons you need. They are very responsive. The thumbsticks respond very well. The, the face buttons also respond very well. And now we have those clicky triggers making rapid fire a very easy solution with this controller. Now we get to our second category, 2D platformers or side scrollers. And in this category, the controller is going to be getting a very solid 8 out of 10. The enlarged D-pad on this controller actually makes it pretty decent for platformers and side scrollers. The rocking motion isn't excellent, but generally for these games, it's not needed that much. Once again, the responsive face buttons, the analog sticks, which respond very well, and often the fact that the second analog stick is a C stick is actually not as much of a problem. The clicky triggers, once again, solve that problem from its wired counterpart. However, with the absence of rumble and the other features, I just can't push the score any higher than this. So now we get to traditional 2D fighters. And I just want to precise, this is not Smash Brothers. We're talking about the Street Fighter. We're talking about Samurai Showdown and those type of games. Now in this category, unfortunately, the controller is going to be scoring a little bit lower with a 7 out of 10. Although, as I said earlier, the D-pad is pretty decent on this controller, it isn't great. And for traditional 2D fighters, you know that you need a really solid, a really high-performing D-pad. And rocking motions on this D-pad are just so-so. They're not great. However, if you put the time in for to get the muscle memory for the different button placement on this controller, you can still have a solid experience because you're not really handicapped by the absence of rumble or the other features for this these type of games. Now, last, as usual, we always end on racing and kart games. And in this category, this controller is going to be getting another solid 8 out of 10. Now in this category, this controller has some really solid performance. It has everything you need for an average racing game. It even has the motion control if you prefer to play that way. The clicky triggers at the back, once again, don't handicap you if you need to do rapid presses in some of the different games. And the fact that your second joystick is a C-stick doesn't really handicap you for this either. However, the lack of rumble is why this controller isn't going to be scoring any higher because this category's gaming experience can really be pushed a step above when you have a controller with rumble or even better haptic feedback. So now if we look at the overall, that gives us a score of 40.5 out of 55. Now for a GameCube style controller, that is a very solid score. And honestly, I was really impressed with this controller. Because don't forget, this is a GameCube style controller, but today we're reviewing it as an everyday controller in every gaming scenario. And I haven't even addressed yet its performance in Smash Brothers, which honestly is excellent. But we will be addressing it more specifically in that roundup video I talked about with the other GameCube style controllers. 
Now, one of the main reasons I think it's important to review this controller for everyday gaming, however, is the price point. This is a generally $50 controller. There are some of the more plain versions that sometimes can go on sale somewhere around $35 to $40, but if you're looking at the regular MSRP, this is a controller that's sold, like I said, for $50. And $50 for a Smash Brothers only controller can be a pretty hefty price tag. Unless like 95% of your gaming time is spent only on Smash Brothers, then I guess it makes perfect sense. However, with the score it got, I guess you shouldn't feel bad if you're buying this controller because you really enjoy Smash Brothers, but you do want a second controller that you can still use for any other gaming type. There is, however, that one issue that always comes up for controllers around this price point, and that's the fact that for only $10 more, you can get the official Nintendo Pro Controller. And you're not losing any of the functionalities that you're sort of giving up to, ha to buy this controller. So if you're not really a huge fan of Smash Brothers, or you're not just really attracted to the design of this controller, you really have to ask yourself if the $10 off you get for this controller is worth trading in the ability to read NFCs, the haptic feedback. And once again, as I've mentioned in other reviews, I just wish they would have thrown in one extra feature. Like just give me normal rumble or give me the rechargeable battery and you know what? It makes it a lot easier for me to recommend this controller instead of the Pro Controller. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't like the Pro Controller. It's just it's a little plain. And I know a lot of people are looking at these third-party manufacturers because they make visually very appealing controllers. So overall, I guess my recommendation is if you love Smash Brothers, big thumbs up for this controller. If you don't, you really have to be attracted to the design for it to be worth it, or you just have to really be used to the GameCube design to really want to use this controller instead of the Pro Controller. Oh, and one fair warning, if you do start to use this controller, don't get frustrated at first. It will take a few hours of developing the muscle memory to recognize the button placement, but once it's you know, gotten to that point, you will not have a problem playing any game with this. However, Fair recommendation, don't switch back to a regular controller because you might actually lose that muscle memory once again and have to restart the process each time. So if you decide to use a GameCube controller as your everyday controller, I strongly recommend you then stay away from regular controllers just to keep that maximum performance. So I think now we've said pretty much all we need to say about this controller and I think you have all the information you need to decide if you want this controller for yourself. Once again, just a friendly reminder, affiliate links will be down in the description below. So if you are picking it up, please use those links, helps the channel out. At the same time, don't forget to smash the like button if you've gotten to this point in the video. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to activate that notification bell so you know when my new videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.